ChatGPT can help you in so many ways. It can help with brainstorming, ideation, content generation, task automation, and much more. But one thing it does very well is helping you with data analysis. You have the ability to upload over 10,000 rows of data, whether that be in an Excel sheet or a Google sheet, and you can get it analyzed with ChatGPT. You can get it cleaned, you can get downloadable copies, you can re-upload to your program, and so much more. It's great at helping you view and analyze your data. But if you're anything like me, you are a very visual person. And lucky for you and I, we have the ability to generate charts and graphs in order to view our data in a more effective way while using ChatGPT. So you can get these charts generated along the powerful GPT-4 model, and you can ask it questions about the charts. You can view your data in many different ways that you never thought possible, and so much more. I am so excited to get into this video to show you how to generate charts in ChatGPT to show you how to view your data in ChatGPT. And this is going to be wonderful if you want to utilize ChatGPT to its maximum potential. Now, before we get into this video, I want to show you the best way to learn ChatGPT. Now, in my opinion, and in the opinion of the members of this group, the ChatGPT Mastery Course and Community is the best way to learn. It's a private ChatGPT community, and as you can see right now, we have over 500 members. Eight people are online learning about ChatGPT. This is the community section, and anybody who's in the group has the ability to ask a question, upload a video, write a description, let the group know about their findings with ChatGPT. When you go to the classroom section, you have over 55 plus modules in order to learn ChatGPT. And as you can see, I have nine modules going over just chat GPT charts and this is very high quality content that's going to stay private and not be uploaded on YouTube so if you do like what you see in this video and you want to go deeper into charts and all the features that chat GPT has to offer I highly highly recommend the chat GPT mastery course again I'll leave a link in the top pinned comment below and the description if you want to expand on chat GPT and become a master so before we get into generating all the fun charts and the prompts in order to do that First, we need to understand the ways to view your data in ChatGPT. Number one, comparing data. If you wanna see how things stack up against each other, this one's great. Number two, showing parts of a whole. It's important to find out how small sections make up a bigger section. We can use things like pie charts or area charts in order to do this. Number three, we might want to view data spreads. Is our data close together? Is it spread apart? Are there any outliers? The plot that I'm going to show you in this video does a very good job at finding your data spread. Number four, trends over time. You might want to view trends over time within your data, see how things are going up and down, and maybe why they're going up and down as well. So those are the four categories I'm going to touch on in this video in order to better view your data. Now let's get into it. As you can see here, I have this data set showing working hours by country from 1870 to 1970. So over a hundred year period, it's giving the average annual working hours per worker. And this is a 3000 row set of data over 3000. So what we have here is quite a bit of hours being worked by these people. But what if we want to see how they compare up against each other? Well, we can create a column chart in order to do this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to upload that data set to ChatGPT by making sure that I'm in the GPT-4 model and hitting this link icon in the bottom left hand corner of that prompt bar. Once I do that, I have a data sets folder on my desktop. It might take you to your normal desktop, but right now it's taking me to my data sets folder. What I'm going to do is I'm going to upload the data set that I want to get analyzed. So I'm going to upload annual working hours per worker, hit open, and then the first step before you generate a chart, no matter what, is always say, clean this data and get it ready for analysis. This is the first thing you wanna do and it's very important because if you don't do this, ChatGPT will run into a lot of errors when trying to generate your charts and you just wanna clear that up, clean the data, get it ready for generating those charts. Also important to keep in mind that you probably don't wanna upload sensitive company information to ChatGPT unless you get authorization from a higher up in the workplace or authorization from yourself if you are the owner. Now you can do things like get a team account in order to make it a little more secure and not, and not have ChatGPT be training on your data, but just keep that in mind. It's important to keep those privacy concerns in mind, especially if you're dealing with sensitive data. But anyway, we can send off this prompt, clean this data and get it ready for analysis and ChatGPT will clean that data for you and get it ready. So ChatGPT has completely went through the data. It's checked the first few rows. It's checked all my columns and what they may entail. And it's went through its four step process in order to clean the data 
and it says that no data issues were found and that it's ready for analysis. So now we can get ready with the visualizations that we want. And this is going to be the first step you take for each of the ways to view data. I'm not going to go in depth on doing this for every single one. Just know that you wanna upload your data, get it cleaned, and then get your chart generated. That's a common practice for data analysis. You need to get it cleaned before you get it analyzed. ChatGPT will have a much better analyzation process when having it cleaned first. So now I can type out my prompt. What I said was create a column chart comparing these five countries. And what I did was I used the country's abbreviations. That way ChatGPT, when putting them in the x-axis, doesn't cram them together and overlay them atop one another. So I said, USA, Canada, Denmark, France, and DEU is Germany, country abbreviation. And I said, I want you to find the total amount of average annual working hours per worker for the 100 year period of 1870 to 1890. That's what the data is going over working hours from 1870 to 1970 per worker, and it's giving an annual average. And then I said, keep the columns the same color and start the y-axis at zero. When I send this off, ChatGPT will give us a great visual column chart in order to see how these countries stack up against each other and who had the most annual average working hour per worker over these past 100 years out of these five countries. This should be very interesting to see. As you can see, it gives us an amazing visualization of which countries are leading, which countries are behind in the working hours. And it's amazing to see how everything stacks up against each other. As you can see, Germany has the highest amount of total average annual working hours per worker from 1870 to 1970 based on the data that was presented in the beginning of this section. Now the next chart that we're going to go over is a pie chart and this is great for showing parts of a whole of your data. Seeing how smaller parts make up a bigger part. So let's get into it. So this is the next data set we're going to be using for this. We have the top 200 companies in the world with the most money, the most market value, revenue, profits, etc. And this is a decent set of data. We have over 200 rows worth of companies that we're going to be showing parts of a whole of. But what we're going to be doing is trying to take the top five countries based on the amount of assets that that country owns per company. So it's going to get a little bit more advanced, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to head over to ChatGPT I'm going to upload my data and get it cleaned. So I'm going to select the largest companies in the world, open it up, and then I'm going to get that cleaned before I analyze it. As you can see, it's very important to clean. It says that its data types are wrong, numeric values are wrong, and then it's going to go through some other general cleaning. There's a column in there. If you remember, it says B for billion and it has all the commas. This is not the right format for analysis. So ChatGPT is going through here and it's cleaning all of that up for me. And it's a good thing that I did this cleaning beforehand. Otherwise, I would have had to work through all these issues when trying to generate the chart. It might have taken too long and not given us the output that we wanted. So before we do the pie chart, we can say proceed with cleaning. And after ChatGPT is done with this cleaning, I'm going to give you the prompt in order to generate that awesome pie chart. So here we are ready. The data has been cleaned and I've typed out an amazing prompt. I say create a pie chart of this data that shows countries and how much their respective companies own in total assets. Make this for the top 10 countries with the most and put the rest in an other category. And then I can say make the slices, meaning the parts of that pie chart, contrasting in color. That way we can tell each one apart very easily and we don't get confused with similar colors. And now that the data is cleaned and I have my prompt, I'm ready to send it off and get this pie chart generated. As you can see, it generated the top 10 countries by total assets of companies. As you can see, everything is a little bit cramped together, but that can be fixed with a little bit more prompting, abbreviating the countries, having the percentage be on the outside of the circle, and so on. That's a very easy fix. But what we have is a beautiful representation of which countries actually own the most. United States and China are up there, Japan other, and United Kingdom falling closely behind. Uh, it's amazing to see this and how quickly it can be done. All of this from the cleaning to generating the chart happened in about 45 seconds. Now the next way we might want to view our data, as mentioned earlier in this video, is to view a data spread. Is our data close together? Is it spread apart? Are there any outliers? Well, we can find all of that information by using charts that help us see data spreads, such as a scatter plot, which I'm going to be showing you now. Scatter plots are interesting, and I absolutely love them because it gives you so much insight to what your data actually is saying and what it's trying to tell you. And it helps you see if there's any outliers. And there also might be certain subsets in your data that meet together at a certain point, creating a cluster that helps you see okay, maybe something is going on here. Maybe I need to investigate that a little further or I need to put more effort into that section. 
There's a lot of things and a lot of ways you can interpret scatter plots, but I'm going to show you how to generate that now. So this is the data that we're going to be utilizing for the scatter plot. As you can see, we have rows and rows of data and it goes on and on. But what we're going to be comparing from this set of data is the quality of sleep with the physical activity level. We're going to be putting all of this in a scatter plot to see if a certain activity level can correlate with a certain quality of sleep. You know, does your quality of sleep affect your physical activity level, vice versa? Well, based on this set of data, we're going to upload into the chat GPT and we may come to some conclusions whether they have any correlation together or not. So I'm going to upload this set of data by hitting that link icon and uploading the sleep and lifestyle data and hitting open. And once again, I'm going to get this cleaned and then I'll type out my prompt. And after about 45 seconds, it says the data set seems well prepared for analysis and we're ready to go. So now I can type out my prompt in order to generate the scatter plot. Now I don't need anything crazy here. All I have to say is one sentence, create a scatter plot for the relationship between physical activity level and sleep duration. Is there any relationship? Do they correlate? Well, you'll be able to tell by the data in the plot that it generates within ChatGPT. So I'm going to send that off and things are about to get exciting. So ChatGPT just finished creating the scatter plot in about 15 seconds and I keep stressing how quickly it does it because that's important in order to save time. And that's why we come to LLMs to generate these things is to actually get a time saver and to quickly analyze our data in a very effective way. So as you can see, this data is pretty spread out, but there is a general uptrend showing that the more sleep you get, the higher your activity level usually, and the more your activity level is, the better sleep you get for duration. So there are some outliers, as you can see in this data, physical activity level with a 30, sleep hours at 8.5 to eight. But we also have physical activity level at 90 and people who are getting no sleep. So maybe these people work from home in the upper left and don't really get out much or do much physical activity. And maybe these people who are physically at a 90 have very long jobs that require a lot of physical labor. But again, you can change the color of each of these plots in ChatGPT to add in another variable such as weight class or gender or work type. Do they work from home? Is it a hybrid job? Do they work a manual labor job? These are things you can start to add in to get even more in depth with your data. But this is one of the best ways to actually view a data spread within ChatGPT is by using a scatter plot. Highly effective. Now the next thing you might want to view in ChatGPT is trends over time. And trends over time are important because it helps you see, is something going up? Is it going down? People in the stock market and cryptocurrency especially know this, viewing market trends is very important in order to make good decisions, but it's the same with anything in your life. If you like keeping a lot of data and you track your sleep score using something like an Aura Ring, you track your fitness using a Fitbit or an Apple Watch, you can start to journal these things. You can write your mood down. You can write your data down. How many steps did you walk, right? What kind of food did you eat? How were you feeling that day? Did you work out? Did you not? If you start tracking these things for your actual life, then you can really start to find and pinpoint what works best for you in order to get the most done. So that's what makes me excited about data is if I keep track of it in my own life, it's fun seeing trends over time and how certain things may affect the trend. And that's what I'm going to show you with this chart. This chart's very powerful because it's a very basic column chart, but we're overlaying a line graph on it, showing how maybe one thing affects another thing. And it's very fun. This is called the dual axis line graph. And the dual axis line graph is a very powerful one. And we can generate it all in ChatGPT. So first I'm going to show you the data set that I'm going to be utilizing once again, then we're going to clean the data and type out the prompt. So the data set we're using for this is very simple. We're just using 13 rows this time. And it's just very straightforward. We have month, revenue and social media posts. Maybe this is a sub-based platform or just a small company in general. And what we have here is the revenue for the month and how many times they posted on social media. Maybe you're tracking this over a year time span and you wanna see, do social media posts correlate to more revenue? Does it matter? Does it not? Well, when generating a dual axis line graph in ChatGPT, you can really start to draw those conclusions together. So once again, what I've done is I've uploaded my data here, and now I'm just going to say clean and get this ready for analysis. By the way, this entire time, I've been downloading and exporting everything as a CSV file. So the CSV files, in my opinion, ChatGPT can work a lot better with. There were some people in my private ChatGPT mastery course and community that were saying that they were trying to upload Excel sheets, but it seems like it would get the data wrong and it wouldn't really do it all that well. 
Well, I found that using CSV files works very good, especially when implementing the cleaning into the process. So I highly recommend doing that is if you're using Excel Sheets, if you're using Google Sheets or anything like that, download it as a CSV and then go through the process. It works a little bit better in my opinion. But the data's been cleaned and we're ready to go. So let me type out this prompt now. So I've typed out a little bit longer of a prompt just so I can be specific and get the exact thing that I want generated with ChatGPT. Sometimes these charts and graphs need a little bit of tinkering after and a follow-up prompt in order to get them the way you do like in the way that you can visualize best. But what I've said here in this prompt is create a dual axis graph of this data where revenue is displayed as a column chart and social media posts are displayed as a line graph overlaid on the column chart. Then I say you can abbreviate the months in the x-axis and then I give some examples Jan, Feb, March, etc. Make the columns the same color but make the line a contrasting color that way we can see the difference or the correlation a little bit better and we can see these things overlaid on top of one another much easier. I'm going to send off this message and then we're going to get that chart generated very very quickly now that the data is cleaned. As you can see, we got this dual axis line graph generated perfectly. I love the red and the blue on top of one another. I think that looks very nice. Nothing's crammed together because I abbreviated the months down here in the X axis. I highly recommend abbreviations. We have our first Y axis for revenue on the left, our second Y axis for social media posts on the right. And as you can see, you can take a look to see, do social media posts correlate with revenue growth for this company? And to me, it looks like it does because the red line is moving with the columns. Usually when revenue is up, social media posts are up, but when social media posts are down, revenue is also down. So maybe this company relies heavily on posting a lot on social media in order to grow their revenue. That's all I have for this video. If you want to go more in depth on this or you want even more charts you can utilize and the best way to implement them and what they all mean, have them explained to you and how you can utilize them even better, then I highly recommend my private ChatGPT mastery course and community where I go over that and every other feature in ChatGPT. It's very powerful. We're growing we're becoming stronger as a community so I highly recommend that but with that being said I also have a ton of free content here on YouTube you can learn and enjoy from please subscribe to stay updated with the channel drop a like and a comment letting me know what you thought about these charts which one's your favorite which ones do you use in chat GPT and so on all right I'll see you in the next video